It's Friday, game night, and your group has been locked in tense combat with a group of orcs and goblins for almost an hour of real world time. Only a couple of heavily armored orcs remain, and that pesky goblin warlock that your ranger just keeps missing with his bow. The combat continues. Hit, miss, miss, hit. Magic missile, sword strike, arrow, healing spell. Magic missile, sword strike, arrow, healing spell. The rhythm is soothing. Uh, your wizard certainly thinks so, as his head rests on the table between turns. And your fighter seems to be enjoying her chance to take another swing and roll the die. It gives her a nice break from checking her Twitter feed. If the scene sounds familiar, I hate to break it to you here, but your combat is boring. Let's talk. Hi everyone, my name is Nate and you're watching WASD20. In today's video, we'll be covering some reasons your D&D combat might be boring, and some ways you can spice it up to make combat a highlight of your game, rather than the point where it all comes grinding to a halt. So, here we go. The first reason your combat might be boring is because it lacks purpose. What's the story? What purpose does it serve for the overall narrative of your game? For me, I avoid random encounters for this very reason. I like to be intentional about each encounter, which is not to say that all DMs should avoid random encounters or that they can't serve a purpose. A lot of DMs use them really well, I know. They can make travel feel risky and can impart a sense that the game world is a dangerous place. But if a random encounter takes up one hour of every three to four hour session, it's worth asking if you want to spend a quarter to a third of your game time on things that don't really drive the main narrative of your campaign all that much. Especially if you're playing sporadically and you have trouble scheduling time with your group. That time is precious and you want to keep the story moving. Even if the actual combat isn't that exciting, making the combat feel meaningful by connecting it to the narrative of your campaign can really help engage your group and make sure it doesn't become boring. Your combat might also be boring because it's too slow. In my mind, this is one of the biggest factors in avoiding boredom at the table. Keep it snappy and keep it moving. Read your monster stat blocks ahead of time so that you aren't wasting time looking up their abilities at the table and so that you aren't missing out on awesome mechanics that can really spice things up. I've had a lot of occasions where I've, after the fact, after a game, gone back to the monster manual and realized, oh man, I forgot this really cool monster ability that I wish I would have used. Also, speed things up by telling your players whose turn it is as well as who is on deck. And ask that person who's on deck to be prepared when it's their turn. Personally, I use initiative tracking cards. I basically cut up some index cards and, and put some labels on them that are quick references and put them on the edge of my DM screen. I can keep the armor class, the passive perception if I'm playing fifth edition, and I even color code them often uh, just to make them really easy to spot who's who and who's going when. When it does come to a player's turn, if they aren't ready, skip them for now and tell them you'll come back to them. They'll get the idea eventually, and your combats will be so much faster with less opportunity for boredom to set in. Another way to speed things up is to boost the damage monsters are dealing and reduce their overall hit points. Let's take this ogre for example. He has 59 hit points, so let's knock him down to 49. His damage is 2d8 plus 4, so let's take that up to 2d10 plus 4. You might want to be a bit careful here, and this works best if you're experienced and have some feel for what your party can handle. But overall, I do really like this, and I find it helps combat feel more deadly and speeds it up. Two things I really like. In reality, we should probably do an entire episode about speeding up combat. There's so much more we could say about this, but your combat also might be boring because you've made it all about the PCs and their enemies, and you've forgotten the third party the environment. Make things happen. Thunderstorms, sandstorms, rock slides, forest fires, stampedes, all of nature is at your fingertips. Now be careful, don't bust out some kind of huge dramatic set piece every time, but occasionally spice things up at the table in combat by reminding your players that the natural world is dangerous and unpredictable. And for that matter, the civilized world is too. Uh, what if a crowd of protesting mine workers, for example, stumbles on the party's back alley brawl with some bandits and the whole crowd panics? Sounds like fun to me. 
Somewhat related to this, another way to spice up combat is to give your players things to interact with and use. This could be the environment, so make your description of the environment detailed enough that the PCs can use the landscape of the battle to their advantage. For example, rocks for cover, tall grass, steaming pits of lava, a raging river. And that's just the natural stuff. Think about chandeliers and curtains, tables, a blazing fire in the hearth with a huge bubbling pot of soup. And my recommendation is not trying to plan out exactly what can be done with each item. Just put a bunch of stuff out there and see what the players do. It's a whole lot of fun and they usually surprise you in a good way. Rich descriptions and external events can spice things up and give your players ways to use what they see around them. A dungeon master can also give players more obvious weapon-like things, a catapult or a ballista, traps they can set, or single-use items like a, a gnomish hand grenade or something, or a, a dwarven thunder tube. Thunder tubes were these amazing dwarven lightning bazookas my DM Matt gave us in season one of The Provokers. So go nuts. Homebrew all sorts of strange and fantastical weapons, and if you make them single or limited use, they won't break your game or nullify your player's other weapons. They will make for more fun and creativity in combat. The last way your combat might be boring is that it lacks narrative description. If it becomes a matter of, I hit with my sword, and then he shoots you with his bow, that doesn't sound very interesting. This might be a matter of taste and style, but I favor more dynamic battle descriptions. I duck under the ogre's club swing and spring up, driving my blade up toward his belly. In contrast to a previous tip, this can actually slow combat down, so don't go too crazy with it unless your group really likes a lot of description, but just a little bit of narrative description can really help. Remember, in D&D 5e, one round of combat is six seconds. It might take your group eight, 12 minutes just to get through one round, and even though it might feel like a slow process of I hit, you hit at the table, try to flavor your combat, both as DM and as players, in a much more fluid and dynamic way. Think of your favorite fight scenes in movies or TV shows. Dungeon Masters, if your players are not very descriptive, try asking them what their attacks or spells look like. I usually save this for just the really high impact actions, a crit or a really good damage roll, or for when a character actually kills an enemy. This involves them in the storytelling and takes combat beyond the feeling of just rolling dice. These have been some of my tips for keeping combat in D&D from becoming boring. But I'd love to hear from you as well. What have you found to be the culprit when it comes to boring combat at the table? And how do you overcome these things to make the game better and to keep everyone excited and engaged in D&D combat? Just leave those comments down below. I always love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like and make sure you're subscribed. I would greatly appreciate it. Oh, and if combat at your table has become rather boring, you might want to consider sharing this video with your group. I'd appreciate that too. Before we go, I'd like to thank my patrons for their support of WASD20. This content is fueled by these amazing people, and you could have your name up there too. Just head over to patreon.com slash WASD20 and sign up today. Even a dollar or two a month is greatly appreciated, and it all adds up to help keep the lights on around here. Uh-oh. Take care, everybody, and you'll see me again very soon.